Happy New Year, everyone! Welcome to the Ecam Channel. This is John. Today, we will talk about exploring the operating potential window for large chemical energy storage systems. This is one of the first experiments you will perform when you start exploring the large chemical properties of a new material. You will come across multiple terminologies that mean similar things, but you are used under different scenarios, including operating windows, potential windows, voltage windows, large chemical windows, stability windows, etc. In general, this stands for the potential range in which an energy storage system can stably operate. This video will discuss its importance, practical considerations, and experimental procedures, emphasizing electrode characterizations. The voltage window is particularly important in large chemical energy storage systems because their energy is directly proportional to the voltage that charge is delivered. It is determined by the difference between the cathodic and anodic stability limit of the electrode materials and the electrolyte. Therefore, when researchers push for higher energy in batteries and supercapacitors, materials and electrolytes that can be stable at extreme potentials are continuously important subjects of interest. The voltage window is even more relevant in large chemical supercapacitors, where energy is proportional to the square of the voltage. In supercapacitors that do not involve redox reactions, electrode materials like carbon often have wider stability windows than electrolytes. It makes extending the voltage window of supercapacitors primarily a tax of seeking electrolytes with wider stability windows. When the electrode is not the limiting factor, the potential or voltage window is determined by the thermodynamic stability of the electrolyte, but is still affected by the catalytic properties of the electrode. Later in this video, we will switch the terminology from voltage window to potential window because we will focus on a single electrode instead of an energy storage device. The thermodynamics of electrolytes are best illustrated in the aqueous cases where the Perbe diagram exists. Perbe diagrams are essentially phase diagrams that map the conditions of potential and pH where various redox species are thermodynamically stable. In this example of the Perbe diagram of water, applying a potential lower than the black line will result in water breaking down into hydrogen and applying a potential higher than the pink line will cause oxygen evolution reactions. Water is only stable within the two limits. This limitation can be determined as a function of pH by the Nernst equation, as shown in the example of the hydrogen evolution reaction here. However, what's not included in the equation is the activity of water, which plays a major role in the stability window. An extreme case is a water in solid electrolyte where the activity of water is so low mm -hmm. that the potential window of this aqueous electrolyte can be extended to 3 volts and above, rivaling that of organic electrolytes. In organic electrolytes, the potential window is limited by the oxidation and the reduction of the organic solvent. Similar to the aqueous case, the potential window is affected by the electrolyte salt. High concentration electrolytes and the locally high concentration electrolytes are still of interest to many researchers. Now that we know something about the importance and fundamentals of potential windows, let's talk about how to determine it experimentally. Three electrode cells are commonly used for characterizing new electrode materials. The two most prevalent techniques for potential window determinations are cyclic voltammetry and coronal amperometry. The cyclic voltammetry method involves incrementally increasing the potential window, starting from the open circuit potential and evaluating the Coulombic efficiency or other related parameters of the resulting voltammograms. A Coulombic efficiency close to 100% is a good indicator of stability. Coronal amperometry is another useful technique. It requires you run successive potential hold tests to determine the leakage current after cell stabilization. A leakage current close to zero indicates that the electrochemical system is stable. When it comes to two electrode cells, you can still use cyclic voltammetry to determine their voltage windows. The caveat for supercapacitors, especially the symmetrical ones, is that the only one side of the voltage window should be explored and reported, as shown in this plot. Going across zero volts will only reverse polarization and does not present practical meanings. You can find more information in this Advanced Energy Materials Protocol paper. We will discuss more practical considerations and experimental procedures in the next two slides. There are a few practical considerations that you may want to prepare yourself for before you plan your experiments. First of all, the potential window will likely be different for each electrode material because each of them will have different catalytic activities. 
In this figure, it is clear that the electrolyte is way more stable against a GC or glassy carbon electrode than an AC or activated carbon electrode. It means that when you find a potential window from the literature, you will have to take it with a grain of salt. Second, the potential window exploration experiment is likely destructive to your electrode. In the same figure, you see that when the electrolyte broke down and formed a film on the electrode, it blocked a significant portion of micropores of the activated carbon electrode, reducing the current density. This process is irreversible, so prepare to sacrifice electrodes for such tests. If you are using a very small amount of electrolyte, consider replacing it too. Third, in an actual experiment, the measured potential window will be affected by the kinetic limitations on top of the thermodynamic limitations. The window will always be smaller when you use a slower scan rate of cyclic photometry. For more accurate window determination, you will want to use a slow rate in the context of your experiments. Last but not least, the onset of exponentially increasing current in voltammograms can provide a preliminary estimate of the window. However, this is more experience-based and it can be hard to give a quantitative reason why a certain current density should be considered for the cutoff current. Therefore, more rigorous procedures are encouraged based on chromic efficiencies or S-values, which will be introduced next. In a typical potential window exploration experiment, we can pick a scan rate of 2 to 5 mV per second and start the exploration around this open circuit potential, or OCV. It is recommended to make two electrochemical cells, one for the positive direction and the other for the negative direction. Take 50 to 200 mV for each potential increment. The increment determines the resolution of your potential window. A potential window exploration experiment towards the negative direction is shown here. For stability quantification, we can calculate Coulombic efficiency. If you do not know how to do that, please refer to our previous video on that subject. Typically, you want Coulombic efficiency greater than 90% or 99%. Another parameter named S-value proposed by Kang Xu and others is very similar to Coulombic efficiency, but allows for the cutoff limit to be better defined. In this case, for the cathodic range, you will divide the charge of positive current by the charge of negative current and subtract the result by 1. For the anodic range, you will invert the division of charges from the positive and the negative currents. This allows the value to be positive in the range that we care about. A cutoff limit can be set at 0.1 or 0.01, depending on your system. The S value for the voltammograms on the left is shown on the right. You can choose a cathodic limit potential of negative 1.55 volt versus silver silver chloride if you set the limit to 0.1 or negative 1.2 volt versus silver silver chloride if you set the limit to be 0.01. For coronal amperometry, the practical considerations are like those for the CV experiments. Be ready to dedicate two electrochemical cells to this experiment. This experiment may be closer to the thermodynamic conditions as more time is given to allow the cell to stabilize. When it comes to experimental procedure, you may start from open circuit potential and pick 50 to 200 mV as your potential increment. The criteria for holding duration is the stabilization of leakage current, but 20 minutes to 1 hour is typically used. A good cutoff current density is negative 0.1 amps per gram for the cathodic range and positive 0.1 amp per gram for the anodic range. An example is shown on the right where the authors use negative 50 microamp per centimeter squared as the cutoff to determine the cathodic limit potential in dimethyl sulfoxide, acetonitrile, and propylene carbonate based lithium TFSI electrolytes. I hope this video helps you learn something about potential window exploration. We should all have a peaceful, joyful, and productive 2024. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. The main references in these videos are listed here and in the description section. The videos in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.